All right, so the first thing to be done is to figure out how much time remains between the current time and the next birthday. Well, remember in this program, we have a date time object called the current time, which holds the time when the program ran. And also we have a date time object called the next B day, which is the next birthday, uh, which could be this year, which could be next year. But by the very definition, by the very construction, it is always after the current time. Now you might wonder what happens if the birthday happens to be on the same day as the program is running. Remember, if the birthday is, you know, the same day, in fact, your next birthday will be next year, right? So it's always, it's always going to be by definition, uh, by construction, in fact, after the current time. Now to find out the difference between these two, what I need to do really is a very simple statement. I'm going to say DD, uh, you know, which is just a name that I'm giving. So I'm going to call it DD is equal to say next B day minus the current time. Now, what happens here is quite interesting. Let's just run this small statement and we'll see what's going on. So I run my program again. You know, it asks me which year you were born to one. So I say 90, 77, 1, say 31. Now, this program is run. The DD has been created. Now, if I click on D, if I enter DD here, notice it tells me DD is date time, the time delta, 61 days, 5, 8, 6, 4, 9 seconds, and then something in microseconds. Now, what does this mean? As I mentioned earlier, DD is in fact what is called a time delta object. Now, as you can imagine by the name, delta means difference. Time delta was mean difference in time. So what DD is telling us is that this next birthday is 61 days, 58,649 seconds and this many microseconds away. Now, for those of you who do not know what microsecond is, you can ignore that for now. But basically, microsecond is a millionth part of a second. So basically one million microseconds make one second. So obviously a very small number uh, in the context that we are dealing with. Now we can also look at this DD in a slightly different way. We could do print DD. And now what we see is something which is a little bit different, but it's actually similar. I'm going to tell you how this is similar. Notice first of all, it was it said days equals to 61, whereas it says 61 days here. So it's it's absolutely the same. Also, the microsecond number was 411934. It's also 411934. Now, what does this you know, mean and how does this relate to this seconds? Well, what this means is 16 hours, 17 minutes and 29 seconds. Now, let's just do the mathematics. 16 hours means 16 times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. So that is this many seconds. Plus, if I did 17 times 60 seconds because 17 minutes or so 17 times 60 seconds, plus 29 seconds, what I get is exactly 58649. So even though it looked like there is something different being printed here, but really it's the same amount of information, same, uh, let's say, uh, information being displayed here or here. What this is telling us is that DD is an object of the type time delta. Again, you know, like I said, this is basically a difference of times and the difference it's representing is 61 days, 58,649 seconds. Alternatively, when we said print DD, it also told us 61 days, 16 hours, 17, 16 hours, 17 minutes, 29 seconds, and this many microseconds, which as we saw is exactly same as the same number of seconds. So in short, these two are really the same things. Uh, in fact, we can use both of these to proceed further. We will see how to do that as we go along. Right. Take care. Thank you so much.